You're watching Photographing the World 4 Behind the Scenes. If you'd like to learn more about the full tutorial, check out fstoppers.com slash store. Just like all good toilets in the United States or anywhere abroad, you need the sign that shows how to actually use the toilet. So today we are doing an Antelope Canyon photo tour. These are the canyons that I'm sure you've seen a million times before where you kind of walk through these really small winding corridors. And um, Patrick and I are gonna be shooting pictures, maybe video, I don't know, on the uh, Fuji cameras for this. And Elia is once again bringing his uh, medium format camera in here. So, uh, I'm looking forward to this. This should be really fun. So the funny thing about this location is that the only way to get in is to wait in line and pay for a ticket. So, Alaya and Naomi are no different than all of the other tourists here. So here's how they cart all these people in. Look at all of these trucks. Herds and herds of people. So I just realized I'm not really gonna be able to take pictures here because I have a tripod head that cannot rotate vertically. And I imagine all of these images are vertical shots. If that wasn't bad enough, we were then introduced to the crowds. I have never experienced anything like this in my life. There were hundreds of people crammed in this canyon and if you paid extra for the photography tour, you were allowed to bring a tripod. So all these shots that you see on people's Facebook that are so artistic, this is how they are taken. What do you mean you don't work that way? You didn't like that experience in no, there? No, I hated that entire experience. When you go into these places, you want to get a good shot. And when you're pressured, it's just no fun. Yeah. So like your whole experience is like, get the shot, get the shot, get the shot as fast as possible. And you don't have a time, you don't have any time to enjoy the location. Uh, yeah, I, I, can, I can take a photo. I think I know how. Three, two, one. This is what Elias' life looks like. Three, two, one. Right behind this photo op is Aliyah waiting so that we can get our B-roll shot, but if you ever see these pictures in this canyon, you'll realize how many freaking people there are here. Now, our photography tour guides had three photographs that they had pre-planned that every single photography tour participant would be able to take. And when it was time to take those shots, they would push the people back who didn't pay for the photography tour and we would have approximately 60 seconds to all take an identical photograph. So they're throwing dirt at us now. <laughs> yeah, so like that we can yeah. get this it's shot. So Look at this. <laughs> they had this entire experience planned to the absolute second. And as a businessman, I have to admit, I'm very impressed they could cram that many people in there. They had to be making so much money. And to be honest, the photographs in there do look great. I see a little dirt on your lens, Elijah. Thanks, Patrick. Now, in case you didn't know, the most expensive photograph ever sold is a photograph taken in a canyon just like this by Peter Lick. This photo named Phantom sold for $6.5 million. So I think there's a good chance this is like the Peter Lick image right here. <laughs> this is the spot. It may be. And they're gonna throw the dirt and the sunbeam's gonna come through. And then we're gonna sell it for $100 million. Now you gotta make it black and white. You get the Peter Lick shot? Yeah, but mine's only gonna be $13 million. As you can imagine, Antelope Canyon did not turn into a lesson for this tutorial. So it was on to the next location. All right, so I'm gonna attempt to sync our GoPro 5 to my phone so that I can uh, wirelessly control it on the car. Nothing makes me more angry than trying to set up networks and get things to connect. And so I have a feeling I'm going to get really, really frustrated here. But my goal is to sync my phone to the GoPro so that I can control it in the car and we can get driving shots uh, out here in Utah and Arizona. I've just set up my GoPro to now I can say GoPro record. <laughs> and as silly as that is, it's actually kind of cool. So GoPro stop recording. GoPro, take a picture. Look at that little selfie right there. So here I am, I'm positioning the GoPro on the front of our hood. We have the uh, wire wrapped around the grill and then it goes up and wraps around 
the camera as well. We've been driving for about an hour and it seems like a good time to do a little GoPro action. But when I go to home on the app, you see this, the Get Connect camera. There's the GoPro. Every time it does this. GoPro's tag is don't miss the shot. We've already missed a lot of shots. Well, the plan is now he has voice activation on the GoPro, so we're gonna slow down about 20 miles an hour. Patrick's gonna lean out, he's gonna scream, GoPro record. GoPro record! <laughs> I think it might have to be slower. GoPro record. <laughs> GoPro record. I'm gonna, re I'm gonna reset it. GoPro record! For some reason, the voice activation is not working at the moment. GoPro record! GoPro record! GoPro record! All right, let's just hit record on here, the old-fashioned way. Yeah, let's, let's just drive. drive a little bit. I mean, for once, Patrick actually is right. Dude, for once, I've, I'm <laughs> right almost every time I speak. You guys just <laughs> fail to see the truth in my wisdom. Uh huh. When you go back and watch the footage, you're gonna see that like I did GoPro record, GoPro photo, it all worked, and then I put it on the hood. GoPro record. And like that, we finally made it to Monument Valley. Hey, this is somewhere that's been on my list to visit for a really long time. I'm honestly I know. really excited to finally be here. It's the sort of place I thought I would never be here. Like, I'm not gonna go in the middle of nowhere, but here we are, photographing the world. And of course, this beautiful, iconic shot that we all know is right next to a parking lot. So I'm shooting a lie here at Monument Valley. Here he is, way over there. And I'm using the new uh, Tamron 70 to 200. And I love this lens because it, it allows you to get really, really close. I'm uh, shooting on a cropped sensor, the D500. And the nice thing about the D500, the reason we carry it with us is because the D500 shoots 4K, but it also has a crazy crop factor to do uh, 4K. But when you pair that up with the 70 to 200, it's uh, really, really good. So I can get far away and get that tight zoom. I love the build quality of this lens as I've played with it a little bit. The one thing I'm really finding uh, a little frustrating is that they have reversed the two rings. So normally on the Nikon and uh, maybe the old Tamron, I can't remember. I feel like I'm always zooming here and then focusing out here. Well, they have switched the two now. So every time I go to zoom in, I hit the focus. Um, so I think that's just something you'd have to get used to. But other than that, I mean, I think they did an incredible job with this, with this lens. And so we started filming the next lesson. Today I'm really excited to be shooting here in Monument Valley, part of the great state of Utah. This is a location that I've seen photos of since I was a kid and it's somewhere that I've wanted to visit for a very long time. As you can probably see framed behind me are those three beautiful spires that you see in so many photographs all over the world. Doesn't matter where you go, if you talk about the American West or see the American West in a book, you're gonna see these three spires much like the vantage point that we're standing on right now. Look at Patrick. Wearing the moon boots. I'm wearing the Asian grandmother's hat that we just found on the dirt. I just want to show you this. Looking good. While I've been doing this interview, since we're trying to race as the sun's going down, because you guys know how hard it is for us to light this stuff in the dark, I've actually had these cameras both shooting in an interval timer mode. Now this is a low dynamic range scene, meaning that I'm not shooting any exposure bracketing. So I'm using my interval timer mode. This whole time I've been talking, it's been set to shoot an image every 20 seconds because the light continuously and constantly changes as the sun moves between those clouds. So every 20 seconds, it's been taking a shot and the settings for the cameras actually mirror each other. They are F8, aperture priority and the lowest ISO possible for the camera. So on this one, the Fujifilm X-Pro2, that's an ISO of 200. On the GFX 50S, that's an ISO of 100. Elias shot all the way through sunset and then once it became fully dark, he tried a 30 minute and a 60 minute exposure. It's getting windy, but we just shot a 60 minute exposure. With the GFX 50S, we wanna see if it worked. We've been standing here for an hour. All right. 
Oh, oh look, at that. look at that. That looks pretty That good. looks really cool. There's the 30. That's the 30 minute and that's the 60. We were thrilled to have another successful lesson filmed. It was time to go to bed and wake up the next morning and move to the next location. All right, so we still can't get this thing to connect to our phone reliably. So we're going to do an audio range test now that we know the secret code word. GoPro start recording. Okay, that's GoPro no, stop recording. GoPro start recording. Started. GoPro stop recording. <laughs> GoPro start recording. Get it a while. GoPro start recording. Like a fucking pro. GoPro, stop recording. Stay tuned for next week's episode when we try to wake up early enough to beat the crowds once again. To learn more about photographing the world for, head over to fstoppers.com slash store.